What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So this article just came out yesterday, and I find this to be pretty interesting and a pretty good insight to what the future of America will look like under a Kamala Harris administration. Pretty much the same stuff we've experienced the last three and a half years. More war, more economic hardship, and more open borders and illegal immigration. I don't know how people can look at Kamala Harris and see anything different than what we've been experiencing the last three and a half years. It's the same exact thing. There's a reason why Kamala Harris isn't coming out and doing interviews. There's a reason why she's not sharing her real policy ideas with people. It's because it's going to be the exact same thing. She claims to be this this candidate of hope and change. Sound familiar? But it's just more of the same. And the reason why she's not coming out and doing interviews is because she really doesn't stand for anything, but she stands for everything at the same exact time. This is why I think people are confused. You look at the crosstabs in the polls, and they want to vote for Kamala Harris. They want to like Kamala Harris. They just don't know where she stands on anything. And this is on purpose. So I want to get into this article that just dropped yesterday. It's from The Hill. Hat tip to Rebecca Beisch. I think that's her name. Iran attempted to pass hacked Trump campaign info to the Biden campaign. So you guys remember a few weeks ago, we did a video segment on Iran hacking the Trump campaign and leaking it to left-wing media outlets. Why would Iran do that unless they had an invested interest into seeing another Biden administration? It's because they know if Kamala's elected, it's just going to be more of the same stuff. It's obvious that Iran wants the Kamala Harris administration because it's going to be just like the Biden administration. So they did a proper, they did an investigation on this, and I'm actually shocked that they report, they released the findings. So the FBI and other intelligence agencies revealed Wednesday that Iran attempted to share information stolen during attack on the Trump campaign with the Biden campaign and continues to send material to various media outlets. Quote, Iranian malicious cyber attackers in late June and early July sent unsolicited emails to individuals then associated with the President Biden's campaign. That contained an excerpt taken down from stolen, non-public material from former President Trump's campaign as text in the emails. The agency wrote in a joint statement alongside the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, and the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. I think it's important that why did we start to see all these foreign conflicts in the Middle East the moment the Biden administration, the Biden-Harris administration took power? Is because... In reality, this is normalcy to them. This is what the American people have been experiencing all throughout my lifetime, and I'm sure your life, your lifetime, is constant war and conflicts because of the military-industrial complex. And, and so in a way, voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris was back to normal. But it's not the normal that the American people want, and it's certainly not the normal that we need because you could see all the damage that comes from the military-industrial complex and this fourth branch of government getting power back. It just means more war, more death, more destruction, more chaos. It's not a coincidence that when Donald Trump was in office, we didn't see all these wars and conflicts in the Middle East. And in fact, the exact opposite. Peace was actually being brokered in the Middle East for the first time in decades. We actually had peace being brokered between these Middle Eastern countries that hated each other. But in the way that they did it, was through economic strength, because prosperity brings unity, folks. It just does. When people are prosperous, they tend to be more uniting. When people are desperate, that's when chaos ensues. And this is exactly why you have the division in this country, and it's getting worse, is because the more people's economic situations get worse, the more desperate they become and the more angry they become. When people are prosperous, they tend to be more kind, more gentle towards their neighbors, more cha- more charitable. And so for the people out there, and I'm going to get into another article in a minute, for the people out there that just don't really know who Kamala Harris is, you just have to look at the Biden administration. It is going to be a continuation of the Biden-Harris administration, except it's going to be called the Harris-Walls administration. That is it. This is why they won't do interviews. This is why they, people don't know what she stands for in her policy positions. She's flip-flopping. We all know Kamala Harris to be a radical progressive Democrat from California. Only within the last three months has she been trying to come to the middle. That is that not obvious enough for people? I wanted to touch down on this topic because I think it's really important for people to understand 
Why Iran would want Kamala Harris to be president? Why would Iran hack materials from the Trump campaign and leak them to the Biden-Harris campaign? It's because they want Kamala Harris to win. And this is why. So since the start of the Biden-Harris administration, Iran has generated substantial revenue from all its oil sales, primarily due to its easing of certain sanctions. So the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden administration pretty much relieved all sanctions that the Trump administration had enacted on Iran, putting its foot on the throats of Iran to prevent them from getting revenue. Because when Iran gets a crap ton of money, they don't spend their money on building bridges and buildings and infrastructure for their people. They spend it on war, death, destruction, and the Judeo-Christian values. So reports indicate that Iran has made approximately $80 billion in illicit oil sales since the administration took office. This increased revenue is attributed to the administration's more relaxed enforcement of sanctions on Iran's oil sector. This comes from the freebeacon.com national security. Additionally, Iran's oil revenues have continued to rise with estimates showing the country has accumulated 81 billion to 90 billion in total oil revenue since the beginning of the Biden administration. This revenue has contributed to Iran's ability to fund various regional activities, including support for its allies in the Middle East. Their allies are Hamas, ISIS, Al Qaeda. Uh, just go down the list. That is what they do with their money. So why would we want an administration that is going to continue funding them and allowing them to make billions and billions of dollars? It's dumb. This was part of that nuclear program, the, the uh, Iran nuclear deal from the Obama administration, and people never understood it. And in fact, Donald Trump completely dismantled it when he got in the office because it doesn't make sense to pay your enemies to build nuclear weapons. So in other words, Iran said, hey, we promise we won't build nuclear weapons if you just pay us billions of dollars. And the Obama administration said, OK, and what happened? Iran built nuclear weapons anyways. Why? Because you can't trust terrorists. It's as simple as that. And Donald Trump, being how he issues po common sense policies, knew this. So he stopped it. And what happened? They didn't have the money to fund all these foreign conflicts. So I'm telling you, folks, the next four years is going to be worse than the last four years. It's no different. It's not going to stay the same. It's going to get worse. All these foreign conflicts are going to continue. I feel sorry for the state of Israel because they're surrounded by their enemies. And what worries me the most is this giant faction of anti-Semites in the Democrat Party. You know and I know this is why the Harris campaign could not bring on Josh Shapiro. is because he was Jewish. And the, the faction of anti-Semites in the Democrat Party is so big that it could, cost them election, it could cost them the election if they were to choose a Jewish candidate for VP. That, to me, is a, it's a, it's a no-brainer what's going to happen to Israel and all these foreign conflicts of Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are in power. It's going to get worse. So, I want to get, so furthermore, U.S. trade with Iran has also increased during this period, with a total trade between the countries reaching 81 million in 2023, which is a 43% increase compared to the previous year. So this is what was happening. Every year during the Biden-Harris administration, Iran has made more and more money off their oil revenues and trade revenues. And then so you, want to, so you go back and you say, okay, so how did that differ from Donald Trump? Why was Iran not conducting these acts of terrorism during the Trump administration? It's purely economics. It's will versus capacity. Iran may have the will to conduct these acts of terrorism and attack Israel and chant death to America, but unless you give them the capacity to do it, they're not going to be able to do anything. And that's exactly what Donald Trump did. He had his foot on the throats of Iran by not allowing them to make a ton of money. Biden-Harris get in the office and they relieve sanctions. Why? I have no idea. It makes no sense why an administration would come in and knowingly remove sanctions and relax sanctions on a country that chants death to America. It makes no sense at all. So you might ask, is there more money being made from oil revenue and sales now during the Biden-Harris administration than there was from the Trump administration? And yes. So Iran's revenue from oil sales significantly increased during the Biden-Harris administration compared to the Trump administration. Under the Trump administration's maximum pressure campaign, 
Strict sanctions were imposed on Iran, significantly limiting its ability to export oil and generate revenue. During that period, Iran's oil exports were reduced to an average of around 775,000 barrels a day, generating approximately $25 billion in revenue between 2019 and January 2021. So think about that. So you have, in one year, $81 billion versus $25 billion in the entire Trump administration. This is why you're starting to see all these conflicts, because Iran now has the capacity to pay all these proxy wars, to pay to fund Hamas, to fund ISIS, to fund all these conflicts, and to attack Israel. So you could say the October 7th attack on Israel is a direct result from the Biden-Harris administration relieving sanctions on oil, allowing Iran to create hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue. It's it. It is a sheer will versus capacity issue. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. And the one way you fight these people back and, and, and you prevent them from conducting acts of terrorism is you don't give them money to do it. And so Iran sees this. They know this. Nothing terrifies Iran more than another Trump administration. And I don't know about you, but that should be a pretty big indicator on who you should vote for. You should definitely vote against whoever the terrorists want as a president. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. I, I, don't know how this can, I don't know how this can't be more obvious to people on anybody out there that's contemplating on who to vote for. It's like, well, wait a minute. We had, no, we had none of this stuff going on during the Trump administration. The Biden-Harris administration get into office, and all of a sudden we have all these foreign conflicts breaking out all across the world. It's not a coincidence. Voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris was a vote for normalcy. It's just not the normalcy that we want. It's the normalcy the machine wants, the deep state, the Washington swamp, this fourth branch of government, the military-industrial complex. This is normal to them. This is how they pay their light bills, is with war, weapons contracts, and mercenary groups. And it's shocking to me that the Democrat Party is now the party of war. The Democrat Party is now the party of foreign conflicts in the Middle East, is the party of censorship. This is why people are leaving the Democrat Party in groves. It's not the Democrat Party that it used to be. It's not your grandparents' party, like they always say. It's true. This is why I left. This is why RFK Jr. left. This is why Tulsi Gabbard left. It's just the way it is, man. Sometimes... Sometimes you got to break from the pack, man. And like I gave RFK Jr. credit for, is it's, it takes a lot of courage to change your mind on somebody. But I think the leftist media has convinced people to hate Donald Trump more than they hate their own suffering, more than they hate these foreign conflicts overseas, more than they hate millions of people dying in this Russia-Ukraine conflict. Like, that to me is a huge game changer. Just... The anti-war stance alone when it comes to Donald Trump is enough for me to vote for him. And I, I thought it would be enough for anybody to vote for him. But no, because the leftist media, like I said, has created a campaign, a campaign strategy of hating Donald Trump. This is why we don't know where Kamala stands on her policies. This is why, we, this is why she seems to be flip-flopping on everything. Is it, it's because it's on purpose. If these people were forced to talk about Kamala's policies, it would be a disaster. And this is why this level of hatred for Donald Trump and this acceptance, this normalization of assassinating a former president is coming from is because this is the Democrats' campaign to winning this election, is to get people to vote against their own interests in the name of hating Donald Trump. It's the only thing they have, folks, and this is why they're not doubling down, they're tripling down. This is why the day after, the day after the second assassination attempt on Donald Trump, they were back doing this. Here, check this out. Yeah, we're here to say fuck Trump, fuck MAGA, the whole agenda, the whole fascist. What do you think about the attempted assassination of Donald Trump on Saturday? It was this close. We, we could have lived in a timeline where Trump would be dead, and for me, that would have been okay. It's too bad the bandage was just over his ear. It should have been over his mouth. I think with every fabric of my body that Donald Trump represents a threat to the Constitution of the United States. Look, are they a threat to democracy? Yes. Are they going to take our rights away? Yes. And his threats, uh, you know, against democracy, I think it's important to, uh, you know, turn the page. He will focus on Donald Trump's threat to American democracy. He feels very strongly 
that Donald Trump is a threat to our democracy. So Donald Trump was recently shot at one of his rallies. How do you feel about that? I wish he would have gotten shot in the forehead. Donald Trump is dangerous, and because he's dangerous, Project 2025 is dangerous. Right now, I feel like MAGA in general, they are threats to us domestically, and we see it time and time again. Ladies and gentlemen, why are they not talking about policy positions of Kamala Harris? Why are these people not asking the question, well, I wonder how she feels about this, or I wonder how she feels about securing the border, or the foreign conflicts in the Middle East, or about our stance on the world stage. When you ask these people what they like, what policy position they like Kamala Harris, they don't know, and nine times out of ten, it will revert back to, I just hate Donald Trump. This is the way that they're going to run their campaign. This is their campaign strategy. I've said before that people, there's, there's two main points to this. There is an emotional investment people have to hating Donald Trump. And this is why the rhetoric isn't going away. This is why the hatred continues to build for Donald Trump. It's because these people have been emotionally invested in the hating Donald Trump for the past eight years, nine years, almost a decade. And for them to stop now, I, I kind of think of that time in the Forrest Gump movie where Forrest Gump was running down the road and he just turns, he just stops in the middle of the road and turns around and tells everybody, well, I think I'm going home now. And everybody just throws up their hands and they're just like, well, what are we supposed to do now? That's exactly what's going on in the Democrat Party. They have been so emotionally invested in the hating Donald Trump. And, they, and it's worked, ladies and gentlemen. It has worked. Somehow, the leftist media has convinced people to hate Donald Trump more than their own suffering. They've convinced their viewers and the Democrats, their voters— that they don't care what policies Kamala Harris has. They don't care who Kamala Harris is. She could be a Marxist communist for all they care because they hate Donald Trump more. This is a very dangerous campaign strategy, and it's a very dangerous road for a country to go down when you have this kind of, you know, this social cohesion just busted apart like this. And it seems like we share nothing in common anymore. It's because for the past decade— Democrats have been focusing on how to get people to hate Trump more than they hate their own suffering. We don't hear any policies from Kamala. We don't know where her positions are. She flip-flops. And even the voters in the crosstabs on the polls say, I want to like Kamala. I just don't know who she is. And it's on purpose. This is why she won't do interviews. This is why she won't go out there and take questions from the people. It's because she is a flipping disaster. The moment these people start digging into Kamala Harris and stop the rhetoric when it comes to hating Donald Trump, they're going to be forced to focus on Kam who Kamala Harris is. And this is what you get, man. This was a questionnaire that she filled out for the ACL ACLU. And this questionnaire is really uh, an interesting snapshot in time of that 2019 Democratic primary. Uh, Kamala Harris was trying to get to the left uh, of Bernie Sanders. She was trying to get to the left of Elizabeth Warren. And you really see that in a lot of these answers. And I want to walk our viewers through a little bit of what she said. Let's just take uh, immigration and look at what she said here. She said on immigration, she made this open ended pledge uh, to end immigrant detention. She said she supported uh, taxpayer funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. She also said she taxpayer funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. For detained migrants. She actually said she, she supported that. She wrote both wrote and answered in the affirmative when she was asked this. When I was attorney general, I learned that the California Department of Corrections, which was a client of mine, that they were standing in the way of, of, of surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. And there was a specific case. And when I learned about the case, I worked behind the scenes to not only make sure that that transgender woman got the services she was deserving, so it wasn't only about that case. I made sure that they changed the policy in the state of California so that every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access to the medical care that they desired and need. There you go, folks. If these people are forced to dig into Kamala Harris, if they're forced to dig into her background and ask her questions about why she's flip-flopping, where she stands now in policies— this is what you're going to get. It's going to be a disaster for them. They know the only way that they can win this election is by convincing millions of Democrats to hate Donald Trump. That is it. That is their campaign strategy. That is their financial investment, doubling down on this hateful rhetoric. And unfortunately, it has very negative consequences for our society. 
This is the first time ever in my lifetime that we have millions of Americans, a very, very large portion of Democrats that want to see Donald Trump dead. We've never done that before. That is so un-American, and it's accepted. It's normalized. We didn't even do that shit with O.J. Simpson and Charles Manson, for God's sakes, that you wish somebody would die. Because to them, they think all of this is because of Donald Trump, because that is what they've been told the last 10 years. The last decade, this media has went in on a 24-7 jihad against Donald Trump and convinced these people that as long as you have Donald Trump to hate, policies don't matter. And in fact, RFK Jr. said that in an interview with Tucker Carlson. Who needs policies when you have Trump to hate? It is so shocking to me that people can't see past their hatred long enough to see that Kamala Harris is just going to be an extension of Joe Biden in the Harris administration. That's it. And unless these people come out and prove otherwise, I don't know why anybody would expect anything different. They're trying to prevent Kamala Harris from answering questions and doing interviews is because they know she is not the party of change. This is not some campaign of hope and change like Obama. It's the same lie that the Obama campaign gave us. And I fell for that one. I'm not falling for this one. It's bogus, man. And to sit here and you have all these wars, all these people dying. There was a report that came out yesterday. A confirmed report of over a million people have died in the Russia-Ukraine war. We should be doing everything in our power to stop these people from dying. To stop this meat grinder over there in Ukraine and Russia. It's never going to end until every last soul that Ukraine has to offer is dead. You're talking about a country that's 15 times bigger than Ukraine. I don't know what the answer is. But I can tell you that the guy that was in here before did not have any of this happening when he was in office. Because he projected strength. It is clear and obvious that it's not a coincidence that we all these wars started under this administration. And the American people are going to vote for a continuation of that because they hate Donald Trump. So I just want, so to go back full circle, if Iran is hacking Donald Trump's campaign and leaking the material to the Kamala campaign, shouldn't that be evidence enough to people which side Iran wants to win and why? When you have Iran that was almost bankrupt under the Trump administration, I think it's pretty obvious why. And then you have the Biden-Harris administration come in and they're making hundreds of billions of dollars because of the sanctions relief that the Biden-Harris administration gave them. I think it's obvious why they want Kamala Harris in for another administration. It is going to be another extension of the Biden administration. That is it. With a different name. All you're adding is Tim Walls. It's so crazy, man. But this is the situation we're in. And I tried warning people about Joe Biden months before the election. Weeks before the election, I said, this guy, when he gets in the office, you're going to see the economy flounder. You're going to see war. You're going to see death, destruction. You're, things are going to get harder. They're not going to stay the same. They're going to get worse. And I'm trying to tell my fellow Americans now, I'm trying to warn you, danger, danger, danger. Kamala Harris is a radical progressive that will make things worse. These wars will get worse. Iran will build nuclear weapons, and you could be facing World War III. I mean, that right there, folks, should be enough to vote against this campaign. That right there, to me, is all the evidence I need why I would not vote for the other side. Give us back the guy that gave us peace and prosperity. It's as simple as that. Does he say stupid stuff? Of course. But he has a proven record. His re the records between these two are clear, and this is exactly why they have to convince people to hate Trump more than focus on Kamala Harris's record. is because it is abysmal. Kamala Harris is a radical progressive at her core. She may come out and pretend to be a moderate. She may come out and pretend that she's going to you know, uh, uh, be the administration for the middle class. We already went through all this bullshit before. For people to fall for this lie again is maybe we deserve it. I'm serious. Winston Churchill made a comment once about why he admires the United States. And he says it's, 
It's the United States' ability. It's the people's ability to pull the country back over the edge. And maybe that was a time when people had common sense and they could look at these two records and say, yes, we look like we're going in the wrong direction here. Maybe we should go with this guy who has the better record and people were doing better under his administration. But back then, we didn't have a media that was full-throated in for one campaign trying to cover her up, trying to brainwash people into hating one man rather than looking at the policy and track record of the other person, Kamala Harris. And not just economic reasons. The economy, the immigration crisis, and war. People are concerned about war, man. People don't want to be rounded up in, in, in another third world war, have to send their kids off to go fight in this war that started because the Biden-Harris administration relieved sanctions on Iran and allowed Vladimir Putin to have Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which pretty much greenlit the, the invasion of Ukraine. All this stuff happened under this administration. For people to vote for it again, there's something wrong with us. Maybe we deserve it. So right now, Israel launched missiles into Hezbollah, Lebanon. You have all this, this huge conflict happening in the Middle East that just wasn't happening under the Trump administration. None of this stuff was. So it's mind-blowing to me the, the mental weakness of the American people to not be able to see past what the media is doing in this campaign of hate Donald Trump. It's crazy that they can't see through that and see what is better for the American people and what's better for this country. I don't know. Maybe we do deserve it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you. God bless America. And long live the republic. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.